going to share a short message with you today. And uh, I'm going to ask you to open up your Bibles to Ephesians 6 verse 10. This is a famous passage about the armor of God. And I really believe that we need to be into God's word more than ever right now. So I'd just love to ask you to make a comment. Tell us where you're watching this from. Uh, like this, share this, do a watch party, get the word out. And I'm really excited that uh, our church, New Hope Church, has started opening again. We had 20, uh, we're allowed to have 20 people in the building. We had about 12 or so in the building last night for a, a prayer meeting and a bit of worship and, and shared a message as well. Uh, this Sunday, we've got three services of 20. Uh, you can uh, subscribe, you know, sign up at the website if you want to come. And also, we've got uh, the King's Table Soup Kitchen happening again this Friday, 11 a.m. and 1 p.m., with 20 people at each one. So, we're really excited about. Things are starting to open up. I hope everything opens up more and more soon. And I just really want to challenge you to make sure that you are growing in your spiritual walk with Jesus right now. You know, there's a lot of people that are so discouraged because of what they've been seeing on the news and all the bad news. We need to get back to the good news. And, you know, I'm uh, standing here today in my office here. I'm a little bit sore if I've been uh, exercising. I've got a personal trainer. My uh, wife and my kids and I will go to this personal trainer and we do workouts and, oh, I've got sore backs, sore shoulders. I've been running. I've been jogging a bit recently and I'm sore. But you know what? It's a good sore because I know that I've been working out and my body is getting into shape. And it actually takes a bit of work to get your body into shape, especially when you're 45 like me and you're, you know, getting a bit old and scruffy and you're losing your head, you know, and, you know, uh, I've had to really be disciplined to make sure I get my body into shape. This time last year, I was really sick for about eight weeks with an anti-inflammatory disease uh, uh, and I had uh, autoimmune disease, sorry. I had all this inflammation in my body. I was very unwell and I realized that I needed to get into shape. So I've lost 20 kilos in the last year and now I'm trying to keep it off and get into shape and get fit. But it means I've got to be disciplined with my diet, discipline with my exercise, discipline to say no to all the junk that I get tempted with and to look after my body. And there's a big focus right now coming out of ISO to everyone get into shape and get back to the gym and ride your bike and exercise and all that. And that's great physically. But, you know, the Bible says physical training is of some value, but training for godliness is of great value. And I want to challenge you today. You know, it's great to focus on your physical health but I want to challenge you to focus on your spiritual health because we are in a battle. From the moment we wake up in the morning, we're in a spiritual battle. There is an enemy who came to steal, kill, and destroy. It says in John 10, he came to steal. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life and life abundantly. Every day we have temptations coming from the enemy in the spiritual realm. Temptations when it comes to, you know, what we put into our body. Temptations, you know, sexual temptations. Temptations to lie, to steal, to be dishonest, to be ungodly. Temptations to be selfish and greedy. All sorts of temptations come away from the enemy. And we've got to realize that we're in a spiritual battle. And, and the Bible reminds us that we need to submit to God, resist the enemy, and he will flee from us. And I want to challenge you today to get into the daily discipline, the daily habit of not just physical exercise, but spiritual exercise. And I'm going to share with you one of my favorite passages in Scripture. If you can open your Bibles to Ephesians 6, verse 10. It's a great challenge. It says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the authorities, the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything for, uh, then to stand. I'm here to tell you, we are in a spiritual battle every day. And when the enemy comes against us, we've got to stand firm against his attacks. We've got to realize that, you know, imagine if God opened our spiritual eyes to see what's happening in the spiritual realm. Imagine if we could see angels and demons. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 91 that God sends his angels to look after us. I believe each one of us have guardian angels. I've probably got some here. Wouldn't it be great if they just appeared on the screen? That'd, be, that'd go viral, wouldn't it? You know? I believe that we have guardian angels looking after us. 
But I also believe there are demons assigned to us to lead us down the wrong path. We've got to learn to be discerning and wise and we've got to learn to stand firm when the day of evil comes. When we're tempted, we've got to learn to stand firm and we've got to dress ourselves in the armour of God every day. So it says in verse 13, Therefore put on the full armour of God so that when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground and having done everything to stand. You know, a lot of Christians are backsliding. They're on the back foot. They're um, do, making all sorts of bad choices. They're making all sorts of decisions that are is opening up a foothold for the enemy in our life. They're backsliding. A lot of Christians are neutral. They're just staying average, the same every day. They're not growing in their faith. And you know what? When you're on the back foot and an enemy comes, you'll get knocked over easily. When you're neutral and you're middle, you'll get knocked over easily. But when you're on the front foot, come on, when you're on the front foot, when the enemy comes, you're ready to stand firm. This passage is talking about when we dress ourselves in the armour of God, when we're close to God. You know, the Bible says when we draw near to God, he draws near to us. When we're close to God, when we're praying, when we're in the word of God, when we're in fellowship in church, when we're strong in our faith, we're on the front foot. And when the enemy comes, we will stand firm. So it says here in verse 14, stand firm then with the belt buckle of truth around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place. Belt buckle of truth talks about how we need to speak the truth and we need to follow Jesus who is the way, the truth and the life. And it talks about the uh, uh, stand firm with the belt buckle of truth around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place. You know, there's nothing you can do to be righteous before God in your own strength. It's only through the blood of Christ that we receive the righteousness of God. And when we receive that, we are justified, just just as if we've never sinned. We have righteousness through Christ, and it guards our heart on the breastplate of righteousness. Then it says, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. You know, the Bible tells us how beautiful are the feet of those that bring good news. Wherever we go, we're meant to bring peace. We hear about the riots and stuff in the U.S., you know. You know, as Christians, we're meant to be peace bringers. We bring peace into a situation with the gospel boots of peace wherever we go. In addition to all this, it says, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the enemy. You know, the enemy is constantly bombarding us with the battlefield of the mind. We've got to learn to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We've got to learn to speak God's word and say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. It's not by might or by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We've got to learn to speak and have uh, our, our, our heart uh, take up that shield of faith so the, the fiery darts won't, won't get us. Faith is F-A-I-T-H, forward all issues to him. Take up that shield of faith when you're attacked by the enemy. Verse 17 says, take the helmet of salvation. You know, the Bible says to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Have that helmet of salvation when we know we're saved. Um, no, nothing from the enemy can can hold us back and deceive us and distract us. We're focused on Jesus. And the last one there, which is the one I really want to focus on, take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We know Hebrews 4.12 says, the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to divide between soul and spirit, bone and marrow. When we have God's Word, we can fight against the enemy. A lot of us Christians, we've got a blunt sword. We can't fight the enemy. That's why we've got to sharpen our sword every day and feed ourselves in God's word. I always start my day by reading through four or five chapters of the Bible, a few Old Testament, a couple in the New Testament. And then at at, uh, breakfast here with the family, we have family devotions and we read through that New Testament chapter together. And we ask, what's God saying to you through this chapter today? And we go around the table and we share what God is saying to us. You see, the word of God is meant to be for personal revelation, but also for communities, for families and church groups. We're meant to unpack the Word of God together. That's how we sharpen our sword of the Spirit. So dress yourself in the armour of God. I pray every day, I say, God, dress me in the armour of God. I want to be on the front foot, ready when the enemy comes. I want to be dressed with that. I, I put it on us. I put on the helmet of salvation. Yeah, the belt buckle of truth, the gospel boots of peace, the breastplate of righteousness. I put it on the, the uh, shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit. So I'm ready when the enemy comes. Dress yourself in the armour of God. Be ready because in these last days, we're going to see so many more attacks happening against Christians. The enemy is not happy that he's going to lose this battle. 
I've read the back of the book in Revelation. Jesus wins in the end. We win. The church is, is victorious in these last days. And we need to make sure that we are part of the victorious church, dressed in the armour of God every day, ready for what the enemy is going to throw at us. You know, I remember hearing Pastor Stephen Furtick say about how sometimes when his wife and kids get, get home, he hides outside the garage door and he jumps out and, and scares them, you know. He says, it's one of the only good things about being a dad. You get to scare your kids. It's good fun, you know. I love it. I love scaring my kids uh, in a healthy, balanced way, of course, you know. But he said after a while he lost the element of surprise because they were expecting him to come. He'd like, he, you know, they'd pull up and he'd be like, ah, oh, and they'd be like, oh, you again. When you, Dad, you do that all the time. That is like so last week, you know. <laughs> and he had to then be more creative in the way he was going to scare them, you know, because they were expecting it. You know what? When we expect the enemy to attack us, it's no surprise. We just go, oh, it's just the devil. Oh, it's just the devil tempting me. Oh, it's just the devil trying to uh, give me nightmares. Oh, it's just the devil trying to attack my relationships. Or oh, it's just the enemy trying to make me sick. You know, when you expect it, it's no big deal. We know we have a, an adversary. We, we know the enemy is going to try and attack us. So just brush it off. Like in that scene in Star Wars, you know, he just brushes it off, you know, and has the, the light side, the sword of the spirit, you know. It's, it's like um, whenever the enemy comes, just don't be scared of him. We're not in some even battle where we're not sure who's going to win. It Could it be the devil? Could it be Jesus? We're not duelists. We're not in this equal battle against the enemy. Jesus won the battle on the cross 2,000 years ago. Come, body, uh, come on, somebody. I am preaching today. Somebody say amen to that. Jesus won the battle on the cross 2,000 years ago, and he rose from the dead. He took the keys of death and Hades, and he is victorious it's not some even battle. It's Jesus is Lord and Satan is under our feet. Matter of fact, the devil has no power. The devil actually doesn't have any feet. The devil's just got a couple of stumps for a legs. You know why? Because my Bible tells me that Jesus was defeated on the cross. He's got no feet. Come on. He's even, he's even got no arms. He's been disarmed by Jesus. He's got nothing. Don't be fearful of the enemy. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. We are overcomers. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. When we are dressed in the armor of God, no matter what the enemy throws against us, we win with Jesus. Remember the Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We have victory over the enemy. We need to walk in our authority, dressed in the armor of God. We need to sharpen our sword and be ready whenever the enemy comes. And here's the key after this verse. After about the armor of God, verse 18 says this, pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this, in, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. Paul says, pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I may fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I'm an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. I love the way Paul says, pray for me as I preach. We've got to pray for our pastors and preachers. They're going through a lot, making a lot of decisions right now. Pray. If you don't like your pastor's preaching, it's your fault. You're not praying for him enough. Pray for your pastors and preachers that they'll preach the word fearlessly and boldly as Paul is asking here. Paul's asking for prayer. If it's good enough for Paul to ask for prayer, it's good enough for me. Pray for your pastors. Pray for your leaders. Pray for the Lord's people. In this time, I believe the church is going to, it's the church's finest hour. We're going to rise up dressed in the armor of God and we're going to lock our shields together. You know, Psalm 133 says, where there is unity, the Lord commands a blessing. We're going to lock our shields together. I love the fact that Mel's got this faith and discipleship group where we can hear God's word every day. We can hear testimonies. We can hear about what God's doing in people's lives. We've got to be posting stuff on Facebook with the word of God with good news, with good testimonies. The word of God says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. That's how we'll be victorious in these last days, by sharing our testimony and by the word of God. So my question to you today is, are you dressed in the armor of God? Are you on the front foot? Or are you neutral? Are you backsliding? I want to challenge you today to be on the front foot. Every day we have a choice. Start the day in God's word. It's like you've got an arrow. If you're a little bit off at the 
at your direction. You could miss the target altogether when you let go. You've got to get, you start the day with the right direction and then you'll hit the target at the end of the day. Start your day in God's word. Start your day in prayer. And then let the Holy Spirit lead you through the day to be an overcomer and more than a conqueror. I'm just going to close with a word of prayer right now. And I want to challenge you. Maybe you're in a place where you've been backsliding, where you've been neutral. You've been falling away from what God's called you to do. God is a God of second chances. God is a God of restoration. I love this song from uh, Elevation Worship called Rattle. It's my favorite worship song. I listen to it over and over. And it says, my God is able to save and heal and deliver and restore anything that he wants to. He said, just ask the, the, the stone that was rolled away on, on the third day when Jesus rose from the grave. Jesus can resurrect. Uh, J- Jesus was risen from the dead and Jesus can resurrect anything. God can re- resurrect anything in your life. You may think, oh, I've messed up too much. Oh, I'm too lukewarm. I'm too backslidden. No, no, no. You can make that choice today to say, yes, Jesus, I'm all in. I'm going to dress myself in the armor of God. I'm going to be fruitful. I'm going to take ground from the enemy. I'm going to be uh, wearing that armor of God in my family, in my workplace, in my church, in my ministry. I'm going to rise up and be all that you've called me to be. I want to challenge you today. If you want to get your heart right with God, I want you to pray this prayer with me today. Let's uh, repeat after me. Dear God in heaven, today I come to you and I ask for your Holy Spirit to fill me. I pray that you'll dress me in the armor of God. I put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt buckle of truth, the gospel boots of peace. I take up the, the shield of faith and I pick up the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. And I dress myself in that armor. And Lord, I commit myself to praying in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Help me be a mighty warrior for you in these last days. I pray for a blessing on all of my relationships, a blessing on my finances, a blessing on my ministry that you've called me to do. Raise me up to fulfill my destiny and be taking ground off the enemy. Thank you for victory in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Well, God bless you all. Please make a comment and uh, tell us where you're watching from. Say amen, uh, like this and share this. Let's get the word out that we need to be dressed in the armor of God every day and fired up for what God's called us to do. God bless you all. Thanks for joining us.